super important too, is like really giving your managers um, or even just as a leader, like knowing that you were hired for a reason, right? Yeah. If I wanted to hire everyone just like me, the team's not going to grow. It's going to be just like how I would have built it myself. And so I think it's important to, to hire people that have kind of that yin to the yang of, um, of skills so that you can really balance out your team. Hello, everybody. This is Morgan J. Ingram, host of the SDR Chronicles, bringing you sales development motivational tips and tactics for your sales development journey, your sales journey, and also your entrepreneurial journey, as I believe that sales development is the mantra and center point of your career and also for your sales career as you keep moving forward. And today I have Ashley Kelly from Lever, Director of Sales Development. She also has had other positions at Navarre and also at Zenefits, and she's been doing really well in sales development, has grown a team to over 200 from uh, reading her blog post. So she definitely has a lot more knowledge than me, so you guys need to pay attention to what she has to say when it comes to scaling teams. And I, I'm just super excited to have this conversation. Her blog was awesome, and we've had a back and forth conversations. We've been connected for a while, but this is the first time we've actually like had a conversation and just chatted and talked to her about all her sales development stuff. So without any further ado, Ash, I'm going to let you introduce yourself a little bit further and tell us why you're excited about this topic. And the topic yeah. is going to be scaling a sales development team fast and scaling it right. Yeah, well, thank you. I'm um, really excited to be on your podcast today. I've, um, like you said, been following you for a while on LinkedIn. And so it's an honor to be here. But um, yeah, I mean, I think like what we're going to chat about today is really um, the way I view sales development and how, um, like what the importance of building out a team is um, and doing it right and making sure that you're putting a lot of um, the right um, milestones in place as far as like career development, training, um, mentorship, um, and all of that. So yeah, I'm excited. Awesome. Well, actually, let's start things off this way, because I, I believe that the audience is going to gain the most benefit from this. And you've been in multiple positions of being an SCR and also being an SCR leadership. What do you believe is the current state of sales development? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think um, where we're at now is so different from just a few years ago. I think um, companies are starting to realize how valuable the SDR function is. Um, and I think they're starting to realize that it's not only a feeder um, from SDR into AE, it's not only like a pipeline generating um, machine, but it's also a really um, crucial role, like just to get like a solid foundation of, of business in general. And so one of, um, one of the goals that I have um, at Lever currently is to build out um, a career plan for my SDRs to not only promote into um, sales, but also into um, cross-functional departments. So um, we've moved people into customer success, um, implementation, um, soon to be sales engineer, um, and also product. So a lot of, um, just a lot of opportunity. And I think starting um, in that foundational role and really understanding like, the needs of the business, talking to C-level executives and playing that cross-functional um, role is really important. Yeah, and I, and I like how you're already planning out to move SDRs into other positions. So, you know, previously when I was at Terminus, I saw people go into leadership positions. I saw people go into customer success. How are you planning that out and how are you gauging that with your reps? Is it at 90 days, you ask them how do they feel about the SDR role and they want to go to an account executive? How do you determine that? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think... Um you know, every company is different and like where the business is at is definitely going to dictate like what a timeline of a promotion is going to look like. Um, but at Lever, what we're kind of doing right now is, you know, the first three months are really set for just ramping into the um, outbound SDR role and then being able to prove that you can hold and maintain a quota for three to six months after that by, you know, hitting accelerators, um, being like a go-to leader on the team. Um, and then from there, really sitting down and having a conversation. And, and a lot of the, the conversations start at the interview um, and asking where people see themselves in the future. But then really at that six month mark, um, kind of figuring out, okay, if, um, you know, if you found that being more involved in like upsells and like a customer AE role versus like going out and finding net new business is something that you're passionate about. Let's get you shadowing those calls. Let's get you um, meeting with that team and building with that manager internally too. And so it's, um, it's a lot of cross-functional um, empathy that's, that's involved and also a lot of support from our leadership up high. Yeah. Um, you know, it's something that our CEO and, um, and my SVP believe in as well is that this is going to be a feeder team for, um, for the entire company, not just the sales team. 
So yeah, you, met, you mentioned, yeah, the feeder. Uh, talk a little bit more about that because I feel like a lot of people just see the SCR role as just a role and it's just a pass through. And it was like, that was cool, but like, I'm really just trying to get further in my career. But as you said, I do believe it is a system where if you own the SCR role, you really can make anything you, that you want of it at, in your career. So talk a little bit more about how you guys see SDRs in your company and how you're using them as the future leaders, future managers. Yeah, well, I think there's a few ways. So we're now, um, within the last six months, we've become the biggest team in the company. So I think that in itself, like having yeah. that like, visual force. How many do cool. you guys have? Um, we have, Monday we'll have 30. Okay, so, wow, uh, okay. And managers with that as well. So um, we've more than tripled in the past six months, which is really exciting. Um, and so I think like with that type of growth um, comes a lot of um, like ambiguity and processes that aren't in place. So it allows for... Um, for more veteran SDRs, and when I say veteran, that have been here for like six months, um, yeah. but for them to start like stepping up and actually creating some of those processes. So um, for example, we just purchased Sales Loft um, and have implemented that. So I've had some reps that have really like, um, just have stepped up and helped like implement um, what cadences we're gonna be using, like really taking ownership over that tool. Um, similarly, we're using um, Guru and Highspot. And so um, people that are just like, hey, like I wanna be involved in sales enablement one day. I wanna yeah. be more on the sales operations side. And and because we're a startup that's kind of um, still running around like crazy, it has you immediately have that opportunity um, to take on those roles. And so it's something that's really needed for, for the team to survive, but it's also something that like we appreciate because as a leader, I don't want to be making these decisions for my team. I want to be hearing from them so that they can have the input um, when we're purchasing tools or um, implementing different processes. Yeah, and, and that's super critical because you want to make sure that the people that are getting promoted to that next position are actually excited for it and they're not just like only SDR to AE. So I actually want to talk about that topic because a lot of leaders only look at SDRs as, okay, I'm only getting you in this organization to get you as an account executive. What is your approach on that and how should people be carrying that? Because you mentioned multiple positions. Yeah, I mean, I think... Ideally, I think that is like the profile when we're hiring SDRs. It's typically like in line with like what a, what a salesperson, um, you know, in a successful AE will look like. Um, but I think along the way, there's so much that can change. I mean, um, even myself as having started my career as an SDR, I realized like leadership and management was something I was much more interested in. And so I think a lot of that can evolve. And I think if you have the right support system around you, like I said, like from the C level down um, and everyone um, just kind of buying into that whole um growth, like more of like a career development versus just sales development. And so, like I mentioned, some of those um, roles is everything from customer success, implementation, because um, why wouldn't you want someone that's already proven that they're a hard worker, that's already proven they know the product, that, um, you know, they're going above and beyond for the business and, and wanting to um, grow their own career? I absolutely want them to stay at my company and not go somewhere else. So I'd yeah. love to make that, um, like those roles open. And um, but yeah, that's just kind of how we view it um, at Lever. So. Yeah. So, so talk a little bit more about, cause you started off as an SDR and I, I did it as well. Mm -hmm. When did you realize that you wanted to go into leadership? Actually pretty soon. Um, I was fortunate enough. I was um, a closing AE, but not um, in a SaaS industry. And so I, I quickly knew like I had to start as an SDR. I wanted that foundation. I wanted um, to learn the business from the ground up. And um, I was lucky that when I was at Zenefits, the company um, was taking off and we were, we had a need for a lot of managers. We had a need for a lot more SDRs. And so um, helping build out, I was on the inbound team and then um, switched over to outbound and helped build out that function. So um, yeah, I mean, I think the, like I said, like when you're hiring a lot and you're bringing a lot of new people in and there's not a lot of processes in place, um, those that tend to like create those processes and rise above are the ones that are going to be able to like step into that type of a leadership role and yeah. kind of be the go-to for the rest of the team. What, what, so what is your advice kind of the first 90 days of leadership and scaling a team, you're new to it and you're also held to a lot of different standards. What were some things that helped you get through that process? Yeah, I would say um, building with your reps, building like really solid relationships with them, um, yeah. trusting them, um, looking at the top performers, figuring out what it is that they're doing differently than, than people that may be struggling, um, and then leveraging them and giving them the opportunity to start um, helping with those trainings, start helping take on some um, different ownership. I mean, I like to think that I hire people that are a hell of a lot smarter than me so that they can, you know, figure out some figure of these out. things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and my job is just to help kind of like clear that path, right? And and um, elevate them and and just help them um, accomplish what it is that they're that they came to um, our company for. 
Um, so yeah, we actually just had um, two managers start. Um, one has been here for about a month and she's just hit the ground running. And I think a lot of that has to do with um, just not being, uh, not being afraid to fail either. And I think no. like create that type of a team environment is really important and celebrating each other for like the small wins and then also figuring out where we miss the mark and, and fixing it for, for the next month. Yeah, no, and then that's and that's critical as to hiring people that are going to help you get to where you need to go, and can definitely see some innovation that you're not seeing because it really is a, a teamwork effort for everyone to collaborate together to make sure they're heading in the right direction. Because if you're talking to someone and you're not, they're gonna, they're not, it's, you're not going to be able to grow as a, as an organization. You're not going to be able to grow as a team, and then you're going to have those like pitfalls that you don't you're not looking for. Yeah, and I think that's super important too, is like really giving your managers um, or even just as a leader, like knowing that you were hired for a reason, right? Yeah. If I wanted to hire everyone just like me, the team's not going to grow. It's going to be just like how I would have built it myself. And so I think it's important to, to hire people that have kind of that yin to the yang of, um, of skills so that you can really balance out your team. Yeah, and I think that that is, that is critical is balancing out your team. And I think it also is having the right personalities on that team as well as you're scaling because you don't want to hire in someone who does not mesh with the team who's actually toxic and then you have that one person who's toxic and then 20 people can't actually perform because that one person has diluted everything. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and it's crazy how much like even just like seating assignments and um, like where people are located physically in the office, how much that can control it too. And if you start partnering people that are really good at cold calling next to people that might be better with their emails, all of a sudden you see this like force multiplier happen on your team. And it's like a really um, like organic growth that happens. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that, that, that is really cool. And so as you're scaling these teams, you're obviously looking at different candidates and you're in the hiring process. What are some key questions that you're asking these candidates to make sure that they're good fits? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, I mean, obviously we're a recruiting software company, so, um, yeah. great. <laughs> uh, so be good. Um, <laughs> definitely one of, um, the only companies I've worked at that has, um, really taken SDR hiring, um, like so, so critical, um, and, and really thoughtful. And I think, you know, the way we kind of, um, do our interviews is one person is really focused on like, um, someone's drive. And the next person is really focused on like their organization. The next person is really interested in, on, um, focused on like what their motivations are or something. So okay. uh, we want to make sure that we're really digging into what we think are, are the key um, attributes that make a successful SDR. Um, I love SDRs that are super curious, um, people that, you know, want to come in and make an impact in day one. Um, we actually have something called a uh, starter project. So literally within your first week, you are tasked with a, um, with a problem that your team um, is facing and it's up to you to go interview you and come up with a solution so you're actually like creating impact immediately and so we look for people that um, are hungry for that that, that want to see that and, and that want to um, make yeah make a positive impact on the business right away so you so are you the first person that interviews are you in the last interview or you pop in and out how does it work or is it rep only interviews Oh, great question. So I'll help with phone interviews sometimes. Um, okay. just depends. I mean, like I said, we've hired um, 30 reps in the last six months. So you can imagine how many interviews it takes to get to that. So um, yeah. sometimes I'll do some phone interviews. I'm happy to. Um, I actually like, prefer phone interviews because um, because it is an inside sales role. Like you learn so much about someone's tone and, and their um, sure. articulation um, just over the phone versus what it's going to be like in person. So um, yeah, I'll do that. Or um, we definitely bring people on site and we'll do like three or four panel interviews. They'll meet with with, um, uh, some AEs that were previously SDRs. They'll meet with um, sales managers. They'll meet with an SDR manager um, or myself or um, yeah, even sometimes um, our VP will even hop in. It just kind of depends. We want, we want to make sure people are also picking us at the same time too. So it's not sure. like all a top interview process. It's more like, um, you know, is this, do you, do you agree with like our values, our culture, our business and, and where um, we're striving to be um, and how can you help us get there kind of a thing. Yeah. So, so in the, in that hiring process, are there, are there signs that you're looking for to make sure that that person's not a good candidate where it's like, maybe they answer a question that way or just their tone that you, that you're also, cause scaling, obviously you want to make sure that you're adding in the right people and not adding in the bad grapes or bad apples. Yeah, no. Um, gosh, there's so much like little things. Like if they don't bring a resume, that's probably one of the things. That <laughs> crazy. Cause I'm like, I know we're like in a digital age. I get that. I've already looked at their LinkedIn. Bring the resume. Something 
about it and like, just like the handshake, like there's so many like basic things in an interview that I look for, but yeah. I can usually tell within the first couple of minutes. I mean, can carry on a conversation? Can you ask intelligent business questions? Um, do you care about where the company is going? Do you care about where your own career is going? Um, and things like that, I think are, are really like key, but I mean, no one's really like, tanked it by any means <laughs> yeah no no i mean I, I know for myself when i was doing interviews there was always we would ask a certain set, subset of questions and if someone answered a question a certain way we would feel weary about that person because we'd be like well you got to know the answer to that question otherwise you're not going to be able to be successful in this role so that's why i asked that question yeah no no we don't have any like um too tough of like or specific questions that we ask yeah. like that yeah, no, I, the reason I do ask that is because I, I know that like, you know, when you're going through the hire process, there's always like that type of personality you're not looking for. Like, all right, you're not looking for a person who's like just too arrogant and they're going to like, you know, basically get everyone away from them. And they're like, this person is not who we wanted to work with. So that's why I'm always like, how do people's hiring process work? What are they really looking for? And how do they really want it to look for their entire team? And what energy do they want their team to have at the end of the day? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I tend to just be a super high energy person. So I love when people talk as fast as I do in an interview. Like that's yeah. always something that, that I think is exciting. But um, a lot of like the background that we see is um, that's been successful so far is like if they've been on a sports team, if um, maybe having worked multiple jobs throughout college or yeah. something sorority or fraternity, something that shows like you can maintain like the school side of it and then also have some fun on the outside and then can also, um, you know, elevate their, whether it's through internships or anything, but elevate like their experience as well. So yeah, um, yeah I would say we look for that, that type of, um, of a profile, but um, also if people have come from a working environment, I mean, like I said, I came from outside sales before becoming an SDR and I think there's a, there was a lot of value in that. So I think, um, I think it's a lot of individual cases and I think that's why like when we do have, um, when we are hiring, we take it like it's a very thoughtful process. Yeah, no, that makes complete sense. And as you were scaling your team, you said max was like 200 people to, to the level that you got. What were some, there was like, what were some challenges during that process? Because obviously there were a ton of things that were going on. And then what was like some really awesome things that happened that you learned from it? Yeah. So Zenefits was, was wild. It was crazy. We hired like, I think it actually might have even gotten to like 250. A lot of that was out in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. um, and I was in the San Francisco office, but still was going out and helping with interviews. Yeah. Uh, but I think um, because we had so much pressure to hire so quickly, um, we definitely, we did, we did a few different things wrong. Like, I think we weren't thoughtful in the interview process. We might've interviewed someone for 20 minutes and been like, okay, you got the job. Okay. Uh, yeah. Like just putting butts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like really on the spot. We have goals of 30 people a week to bring on board. Yeah, um, that's true. That, that like talent bar um, drops and, and then at the same time, like when you're um, hiring that quickly, like you don't have the resources of like sales enablement or sales productivity necessarily built out to handle that large. So I think we were building a lot of those things at one point. So I think even for the amounts of people that we were bringing on board, we really weren't able to, um, to really even set them up for success. So um, that was a lot of the stuff that I learned and a lot of the things that um, I've brought over here to Lever that, that was really important to me that we were gonna have these processes in place. Um, and of course, it's not perfect. It's taken some time. But now yeah. going into um, Q1, I think we've, we've really set ourselves up for success. The 20 minute interview. Yeah, pretty much. Like it'd be like, just like, boom, boom, or like a phone call. And it was, it was, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We, we, we did get lucky with some, with some amazing SDRs. Yeah. A lot that became managers, a lot that became directors, um, and more that became successful AEs too. So um, I think yeah. that was a testament to everyone's um, collaboration and working together and just really like, um, just like the desire to win, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, there's been probably a multitude of people that, you know, did not pan out. How are you, how quick were you guys to let people go if they weren't panning out? Would you, or did you have a 60 day period where it's like, okay, 60 days, we're going to wait for this person. Or if it was like three weeks and you could just tell this person wasn't going to make it. How did you guys facilitate that process? You know, we, we definitely weren't as consistent as we should have been. I think there were people that um, definitely got the short end of the stick on that. Yeah. Um, and I think because we didn't have a lot of the training and development built in before, they, they just weren't set up for success. So um, I would say there, was, there were some that were, were within like 60 days. Most were within like a few months or so. Um, okay. I've always tried to do it as a manager is like very clear conversations around, um, you know, what the expectations are, um, what your performance looks like, documented things within email so that when the, that conversation does happen, it's not a surprise because that's the worst thing is like catching someone off guard with that. Yeah. 
For sure. And then within that process, you probably learned a ton of things. And so these next two questions, I feel like are super important because as you're looking at different characteristics and traits of SDRs, there are certain ones that stand out and there are certain ones that are just like, okay, like I need to stay away from that. So what is the number one trait that you've seen in a, uh, from an SDR that made them really awesome and great? Ooh, that's tough because I have a couple answers because sometimes okay. just hiring someone fresh out of college, um, we've seen some of the most success um, in those SDRs. And a lot of that comes from the background of like sports or sorority fraternity. Right. Um, but then at the same time, I think anyone that can um, show resilience and um, like in a promotion timeline too, like maybe they started as an account coordinator somewhere or like an EA somewhere and then moved into a different role at the same company, I think um, really kind of falls in line with things that I look for as far as um, people that are going to be able to move cross-functionally, wear multiple hats um, and be able to kind of ride the roller coaster of a startup because, um, you know, you go through um, so many highs and lows sometimes in the same day and being able to have that mental strength. Is, is super important yeah no and then so from i think the mental strength is important that was uh, actually one of the first videos on my youtube series was on keeping a steady mindset because if you don't have a mental strength like you're not going to be able to execute on all the tactics and tri tricks and tips that are out there it just won't yeah. work so yep. i'm definitely i'm definitely in with that and i actually i came straight out of college to terminus so i'm a testament to be like okay like i know people can come out of college and kill it if you have the right mindset and you have the focus to get make it happen so I definitely resonate with those points. And then a little bit on the negative spectrum here, but like, what's the number one, like losing trait for an SCR? Like you see this trait and you're like, there's no way they're going to be successful. And it just didn't pan out. Uh, you know, if they've been at a lot of roles for a really short amount of time, especially, yeah. especially like an SCR or BDR role. Um, if I've seen that on their resume and they've been there for whether it's a short period or even if it's a long period and they didn't get promoted or they're leaving because they didn't get their promotion, that's right. always a really big red flag to me. Cause I'm like, well, why would you want to sign up for another nine months or a year in an SDR role? Exactly. Um, Knowing it, how brutal it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a, it's a hard job. You're making a yeah. call to being told no all the time. Um, I mean, there's t plenty of upside though too. It can like skyrocket your career in a company, but um, yeah, I think like that's probably the biggest red flag is um, kind of the why they're leaving their, their current company. Um, if it's been short stints or um, lack, promotion because um to me it's like you should be figuring out something to to get that promotion or to to elevate your career there yeah and then and then for yourself right you've gained a ton of experience as a leader you scale teams you're doing it right they're growing super fast ton of knowledge here what are you looking forward to out of all this to to say and to gain five ten years from now Ooh, great question um so i think like I said, I think SDR uh, just in general has been evolving over the past um, couple years. I think it used to be seen as this like little stepchild in between sales and marketing and pass yeah, yeah. back and forth or whatever, middle child, whatever the case is. And I really think it's grown into its own now. And I think it's going to be um, that third pillar within the go-to-market space. And I think, um, you know, for myself, I'd love to be a VP of um, SDRs at some point. Um, and hopefully that will be here at Lever with more managers and um, multiple locations and more inbound and outbound and segments and verticals and channels. And like, there's just so much opportunity. Um, and if you really leverage SDR as well, um, and, and use the function right, like I think it can, um, you know, can, it can benefit a company astronomically. So, um, so yeah, I think like to sum that up, it's like, it's that third pillar within the go-to-market space. It does not have to be under marketing or under sales. I think it can stand alone um, and fight the battle. So. Awesome. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for hopping on to the SDR Chronicles today. Uh, the last question I ask every single person that comes on the show, what is the number one piece of advice that you have for SDRs as they enter into their new role? Ah, uh, put your head down and grind. It will be worth it. Like coming in early, staying late, it may suck for a couple months, but it will be worth it in the long run. Your future awesome. self will thank you. <laughs> your future self will thank you. That, that's, that's a good note to, to, to head yeah. out on. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Ashley, thank you so much again for hopping on. As I always say, guys, keep dialing and I'll see you guys soon.